here at the National Threshers Association uh, show, Wauseon, Ohio, 2022, featuring Minneapolis Moline tractors, Moline tractors, and the Moline Universals. So it's uh, Friday morning, and I thought I'd go run around of the tractors here. I just did some drone filming before the wind kicked up. But uh, this tractor must have showed up last night after we uh, we left to get dinner. But G1000 propane with a loader on it. And uh, I just did a quick walk around of this, this tractor, but it's a heck of a loader tractor right there. Looks like it's got all the uh, original gauges on it. And, uh, yeah, it's a nice looking, it's got the heavy front axle, which would make it even better. The forks on it, I can only imagine how much, uh, the thing is capable of lifting. We'll walk down, uh, it's got a 302 diesel here. Uh, I don't know if it's got a year on it. I'm going to guess a 67 or a 68. So you don't see many diesels. This one is a Holt Camp Implement, Kettersville, Ohio. It's the dealer sticker on it. I saw him drive it at the Sin yesterday. I just didn't get a chance to talk to the, uh, the owner of it. But a nice straight looking 302 diesel it had the longer levers on the so it might be a it's more of a 67 than a 68 I don't I'm not exactly sure but uh, yeah, it's all there and uh, it looks like mostly original gauges and they're even got a little black clouding in there probably from the uh, the diesel I've seen that happen before got a 1951z the Lenke family of Bloomdale Ohio they've repainted the wheels at some point but it's a nice original Z the belt pulley on it and we've got a G here some point it looks like it's been repainted. Got the belt pulley, nice looking G. Then a UB, an original UB. Diesel. So that's uh, again kind of a more rare to see a UB diesel. Kind of neat just because it's got the different oil pan on it and belt pulley. It's done a little work, different platforms. Fenders are nice and straight, nice looking tractor. And it's sitting next to a U, gasoline U. It's also a nice. Looking original, this is a 46 Mike Vallone of Napoleon, Ohio. Napoleon's just down the road here, not far. Next to another Z with a wide front. Completely original Z it looks like. And then we've got an R here on the end that's been restored like an older restoration but a you know good job of morning, making it look down. nice all right we've got a uh, a z here on the end with a three nice three bottom hydraulic plow i think the sign on this said it was a 1951 z we've got a nice little milk can seat displayed by it Robert Roller of Fostoria, Ohio. 
and Mike and Sandy roll of Archbold, Ohio. So it's on the plow. It's a nice looking restore on the plow. And it's sitting next to a 602. It's been repainted. It's a diesel. Added some extra steps on there to make it easier to get off and on. And this is Mike and Sandy Roll of Archbold, Ohio. This is their tractor. Nice looking 602. Next to a nice 445. It's been restored at some point. Also, a uh, Lynn Roller of Montpelier, Ohio. So the Roller family emptying out the barn, it looks like, to bring some nice tractors up here. Then we've got a Jetstar 3 1970 Industrial. Um, you can tell the Industrial, it's got the different type of hydraulics on it, no three point. Um, Heavier duty, you know, with a lot of you know, with the remotes and all. It's also got, looks like maybe shuttle shift on it. Um, different seat configuration with the different hydraulics. The Schwartz loader, uh, it's got the industrial front axle. Found this interesting is on my 70. 302s, the MM long engine life decal is up up front uh, underneath, but on this, on the Jetstar, it's uh, it's back where they were on the earlier ones, and this also has the, the frame rails, and it has the different weight bracket on the front because it again, since it's a 1970, it's got white on the front, this is for sale, a little uh, advertising for the owner there. Um, it's owned by Robert Roller of Fostori, Ohio. But this does, like my 7302s, it's got the external steer steering cylinder on it, which was an upgrade. So I'd say a very nice original. Uh, and there weren't probably many of these industrial moldings made. Uh, the serial number is down here, 283. 05235 if anybody was interested we got it sitting next to a restored R the 1949 R Mike and Sandy Roller of Archbold and they brought along a uh, MM grass seeder behind it which is in really nice shape I looked at this quickly yesterday but it's a nice looking uh, grass drill moline monitors what it says on the back on the decals it's kind of neat we've got a ZB here and I think this is Ben Rankin's uh, ZB he brought up Yep, from Waterford, Ohio, 1954. It's an original tractor. We did the uh, parade yesterday. I'm glad Ben brought that ZB up. It's sitting next to another ZB. It's been restored at some point, or at least painted. Uh, Stephen Pearson of Fremont, Ohio. Which is sitting next to a 47 UTO of the Denning Brothers. Hillsdale County, Michigan. It's got rear wheel weights on it. It's the uh, obviously the older U with the uh, different fenders on the rear. Very nice looking tractor there. Next we have Matt Rankins. Uh, U302, I think this is a 67. Matt's had this for a few years. Um, it has 
you can always tell if it's Matt's because he's got a diesel cover on it, but he put a question mark on there, which is pretty funny because it is a gas. Uh, I want to say, if I remember correctly, it's got a diesel serial number on it, but somebody swapped out a gas engine in it. I might have that wrong. I'm sorry, Matt, if I got that wrong, but I, I think that that's the way it is. Matt's from down by Belpre, also basically Waterford. And that's a nice, a nice 302 there with the narrow front, which you don't see a lot with the narrow front. Next, we have my uh, 302 propane, my 1970. Brought up its first show and uh, still breaking in the engine, having some fun with it here. And next to my other 1970 302 gasoline. Kind of was a nice load coming up. A lot of white wheels. Uh, I know people have mixed feelings about the white wheels. I know that I really prefer the yellow ones, but in 70, the white wheels were uh, the way they did them. Uh, and again, you can see the long engine life stickers on the front here, whereas on that Jetstar, it was back on the, the tank. And I did put my uh, Moline quick hitch on the, the gas to come up here. We've got a Massey Harris 30 here, 1951 of Carol and Patty Kreischer from Mount Pelier, Ohio. But they've got a little setup here where they got uh, a BF where they can pull it along. It's a 1953 BF. And uh, they've got a little spec sheet on it there. Kind of a neat, neat setup the way they did that. We got a Minneapolis Moline G here on steel. So this is uh, one of the first one of those I've seen. We pulled in yesterday, it was one of the first Molines I saw and just very unique, but it's a 52 uh, brought here by Melvin Wingard from Apple Creek, Ohio. And we talked to him yesterday. His dad ordered this new with the steel on it. Um, he thought that the steel wheels, the Moline dealer had the steel wheels made uh, for it to be put on because Moline didn't offer steel wheels that anybody can recollect like this, but really neat looking the way that uh, the steel looks on this, on this, uh, on that G. We've got what appears to be an original R. It's for sale, John. Oh, I don't know that I can pronounce that name, but I'm just going to put it on the camera because I would butcher that. But it's a 1949, sitting next to another Z, owned by Will Wa Bill Wagner from Kurt Curtis, Ohio. It's a 1947 Z. It's a very nice looking Z. It's obviously been restored at some point. And under the uh, Veterans Pavilion here, they kind of block this off for the Molines and the Universals. So the uh, elders have their 107 Moline Garden Tractor, or 110 Garden Tractor, with their cab R under here. And then their 108 and 112 Town & Country. It's a nice spot to have all these lined up. And I've got my 112 Hydro here and my 110 Hydro and then we've got a MoCraft uh, Brown uh, lawn tractor here on the end so kind of a nice lineup of tractors and uh, with the cab dollar underneath here. All right had to do a slight pause there it was the national anthem which kind of crept up on me and so, and it's awesome to hear that in the morning and watch everybody in this place take off their hat and stop and honor the flag. So this last uh, Universal here, it's unique. It's got a sickle bar more on it. Sickle bar is work driven off of the rear axle. So uh, as it went, it would turn and then move your sickle bar back and forth. It's just kind of uh, a neat aspect of it. 
I hadn't seen one of those before. And this is a 1920 Jim Hindi of Grove City, Ohio. And uh, he's got the rubber on the wheels there. But uh, nice that they drove up. Uh, they drove a little further than we did. Still not very far, but uh, a couple hours to bring this up here. So I'm gonna walk around a little bit. I'm just right here close by. They have a lot of lawn tractors. There's a big group of wheelhouse horses across there, but yesterday these caught my eye. Little one wheel with a, a disc on the front of it. But this one over here, the zipper, you can only imagine what it would have been like running this thing. Hard rubber tires, little engine mounted on the back with a little sickle bar on the front. It almost looks like a hold my beer and watch this type of uh, activity. It's driven uh, there on top of the hard, hard rubber wheels. Pretty neat. So I'm gonna walk around, show you some different brands of tractors. Like I said, there's wheel horses here. I'm kind of in the garden tractor section here close by. Um, but we'll uh, do a little filming and show you what all else is here at the, at the show. Definitely a lot of nice tractors here, and you know I'm partial to yellow tractors, as uh, most of you that watch my videos are, but uh, I'll run through here just some ones that caught my eye yesterday. This uh, 70 Gold Demonstrator 826. It's a very nice 1466. And then uh, a nicely done Ford 900. But when I get down in here into the Alice's, that's when uh, somebody brought a 4W305 which I don't know why, but I just think is a really neat looking tractor. I always thought those were back when they were new. Uh, the orange Alice's with their white was just a very neat color combination and a, a pretty, pretty neat tractor. It's got a quick hitch on it. It's nicely done. And then also here is a 1970 Military 220. I've never seen a Military 220 before. So I thought that was uh, really neat to see yesterday. It says Air Force on it. I would imagine they would use something like that, maintaining runways or whatever. But uh, you've got the industrial tires on the back. And it's got a whole different hitch setup back here with a PTO on it. And then next to it was a, uh, a 220 front wheel assist. There's the uh, 220 front wheel assist, 1970, the Pelton family from Delta. It's got a bunch of wheel weights on it. Really nice looking tractor. So I'm walking out to the infield now. It's a nice original D19 here with a plow on it, but this Oliver 280 uh, manure spreader. They've got it hooked up to an Oliver 77, but uh, I thought it was neat to see the uh, the manure spreader kind of redone. It's a 1960s, and it's Zachary Jacob Jacobs from uh, Hudson, Michigan brought that. Out here, there's a lot of different, you know, there's a lot of John Deere's around, some different uh, different tractors, and there's also a lot of trucks mixed in. So we've got this International S140. It's a really nice truck here with the heavy duty winch on the front, and bumper on it, flatbed, 1956. And that's from Lyons, Ohio. And then in the tent here, not that I'm trying to disregard any of these other tractors, but we've all seen a million H's and C's and B's and what we really care about is Prairie Gold, 57, 445, Jacob Hall in Delta, Ohio. It's got a little display here next to it. Uh, it's a 1957. It's been restored, and uh, it's a really nice looking tractor. And we got a lot more stuff all over the place out here um, it's another truck the flatbed on it 54 Ford F350 it's a nice looking truck there's a line of 
trucks here behind it. It's a big bell on the back of that truck. It's a good thing it's got duels on it. So you got a, looks like a snow cat here. We don't need that today. It's, uh, it's a little warm for a snow cat. And uh, we got a Chevy, 57 Chevy, 1930 Ford. And I don't see a sign on this one. And I don't know my, it's a Ford. I'm not exactly sure what year. And a line of cock shuts and uh, different things. There's a miniature big butt. I did not see this yesterday. Uh, it's got the seat on the back. Got four seats on the back for hauling people around. It's like it's got a little uh, diesel engine put inside there. There's a scraper blade on the front. That is, uh, that's a unique piece right there. All kind of hydraulics on it. Weights on the back. Uh, that is pretty neat. Let me kind of get into over here. They were doing threshing yesterday. They got some small threshers. There's where they were running the threshing machine. And then we go out into the steamers. There's a lot of steamers here. And it uh, looks like they're all starting to warm up for the day. But it's nice that they have this infield here for all the steamers because there's a uh, there's a lot of them. It gives them a lot of space to to get out here and work. So there's an oil pole here. And it's interesting. It's kind of got rubber on the back wheels. And then uh, an advanced thresher out of Battle Creek next to a small case. Next to a smaller case. And then uh, that's next to a Looks like this is a fire apparatus here. 10 horsepower fire bug. Never seen one of those before. You just never know what you're gonna see. It's a big case right here. That's uh, it's a big tractor. The uh, rear steel wheels, I'm six foot tall, and they've got to be seven to eight foot tall. Uh, that's a big one. I didn't see this one running yesterday. I saw it kind of across. We were doing some different things, but that is impressive. 110 horsepower. Yeah, that's a big one. Just kind of working my way around the infield here, and there's... A uh, Huber over there, Gar Scott from Richmond, Indiana. There's a bunch, four or five, parked over in the corner. And they've got the sawmill set up over here. We watched that work for a little bit yesterday. Here's their sawmill set up. They're running it from that Russell. They've got a little Minneapolis tractor here that they've been using on a, a wagon. Again, I'm not real familiar with these old, old Minneapolises, but I can't remember if that's what they call that. I don't think that's a cross motor. That's a little bit different one. It's hooked up to a barge here. get ready to run the dyno over here it looks like they're running the shingle mill off of a hit miss there and it's gonna be kind of loud because everybody's up they're moving but they're warming up the uh, the machines here it's a baker Next to a uh, Peerless, another Baker. 
The bakers were made in Swanton, Ohio, which is not far from here. So, gotta love the smell from these steamers in the morning. All kinds of old doodle bug type vehicles around here. There's a case. And then a Reeves, and this thing is a big dog. Uh, I'm not sure if they have the horsepower on this one, but I saw this one yesterday, Columbus, Indiana. It's a 32120. Uh, so I'd say it's a 120 horse is what they would call it. But this thing is, uh, it's big. And there it is, out of Ottawa, Lake, Michigan. It's got a big tank on the back there. Very impressive. Next to Port Huron engine out of Michigan. Eclipse. So it's another Baker. It's a little Avery upright boiler. Can't monitor is what they call that. Just all kinds of neat uh, and unique things here. Then you get into some half size, smaller ones, the case. We saw this Russell drive around yesterday. It's got a nice paint job on it. Another case. So. So out here in the infields, a lot more tractors and things. Again, unique. There's a Unimog here, kind of unique. And a couple Silver Kings over there. Nice little Oliver 550, 1960. The slat front on it, like my wife likes. There's a little bit of everything mixed in out here. A couple more Silver Kings down here. Here's the 1855 and it's a 74, so one of the last ones before they switched over to the white tractors, but uh, it's out of uh, Ottawa Lake, Michigan. Kind of a nice 1855, nice to see this tractor. It's interesting to me because this is obviously my 955 both on it and the 1955 Oliver. It's the same rear end for uh, the Moly 955s. So that's kind of a walk around for this morning. I'm gonna go try to catch up with people and enjoy a little bit of the show, but I figure I'd walk around a little bit. I'm already starting to sweat. Cold front came through, but that's, uh, it's warming back up after the cold front, so. We're just going to go enjoy uh, the MM friends that have showed up and look at tractors and make the most of the day. I hope this gives you a little bit of an idea what's here. There is, on the back side of the grandstand over there, they have a big area of food vendors and different things for sale. There's a guy over there that has an R that's completely parted out, so you can buy any part for an R that you want because he took it down to nothing uh, and all the parts are just laying there different knickknacks and flags and you name it they've got it here and uh, today they'll be doing stuff with the steam tractors all day I want to say they say this is the oldest tractor show in the country they've been going 75 years so um, I've been pretty happy uh, to walk around and meet people here and uh, the Molines are not as many here as at some shows but it's a still a good mix of, of Molines and maybe some more show up today so I'll uh, update you if they do.
over here in time to see Matt Rankin doing the uh, tractor games with the barrel push. This 302. unhappy with how this is going. your patience and everything else but it's uh, obviously fun just to get your tractor here and try some of this stuff. there. It's the problem with those 302s with the long axles on them. It makes it difficult. Now he's getting ready to do a washer drop here. You got to drop washers in these little cups. So he's trying to line it up between his front wheels. Yeah, missed that one. Hit that one. Sounds like you got that one. He's got that thing idling. It's got to be in the torque holding low. Got that one. Oh, you missed the last one. And it looks like brother Tim is going to try it on the ZB. Meanwhile, while they're doing this, they're running the uh, dinos back here on the steam tractors. And here goes Tim. He's dropping behind the axle. That sounds like he hit the fender on that one. over here working I think the object of this one is to get the whole chain in the uh, middle there unfortunately on the chain with the front tires we're just gonna work it back and forth I think the wide front would probably be a little easier on this I think 
this is for speed of how quick you can get the whole chain in there. over here working the ZB on a basketball shoot. I think it's while you're you shoot from different lines on the ground you get different points. You gotta be moving forward in order to shoot. Oh just missed it. Just missed it. Alright, Tim's gonna try the, the chain here on the ZB. It's a bad thing with a narrow prop, he's dragging on the chain. But if the chain gets shorter, it'll get a little easier on him. Good when he stopped and was in reverse almost immediately. This is all about the time. A little bit more. Couldn't see it because it's right in front of those front tires. she does with the uh, the basketball she's gonna stand up that's almost got it going slow ah oh, just missed it all right Matt's gonna try the basketball he is the self-proclaimed basketball player of the Rankin family so we'll see if he can do better than uh, Tim did look he's getting stretched out oh just short Probably if he had his yellow shirt on, he would have made that. Oh, it's... Here we go. Three points. Oh, off the rim. Meanwhile, Tim's overdoing the barrel roll. Matt's got one more here.
so close. And Tim is finishing up the barrel roll over there with the ZB. Great job. All right, Matt has graciously agreed to show me how the uh, teeter-totter works here with the 302. I think he was out here practicing this last night. I think Tim's going to give us a show too on the ZB. Look at that. Right up there and kicked it over. Like he knows what he's doing. Jackson Snell, okay, the Snell family. I'm sorry. I've been it's over every day at four o'clock. They do a hey, got a parade around there. the track, and they start with the, uh, the steam tractors. So. If I were to film all this, this will take an hour because yesterday we waited an hour to bring the uh, regular truck. Give a big hand. Thanks for bringing it through. Thank you. Periodically here, I will show some of the uh, steam, steam tractors going around to see so you get an idea of what's going on. Mike, and that's his son there, I believe, driving. He finished in 2010. Took him a year to build it. He's pulled a two-bottom plow based on a Massey Harris. Hey, if you want one, go talk to him later. He will build you. He will build you a model steam engine. Hey guys, you got a whistle up there. Any more? Any more? Nope, thank you, appreciate it. Now the reason they are doing this is they're all owned by the same family. The Larry Barton family. Alright, the biggest one on this side is a... Uh, it's all Well, it's clear work inside the fire bug is over here, and she'll bring it through. That's Sylvia, and 46 is, uh, there it is. Uh, it's 11 sixteenths on this side, and that's uh, built 1962, and it's 11 sixteenths. And then the next one is, what day, 42? 48. Uh, that's a half-scale case, there she is. And it was finished in the 80s, and then the little next one, Again, all right, number 50 is a one-third scale, built in the 1950s, and then uh, the one-quarter scale on your side by George Barson of Plano, Texas. Hey, now look at there. We need to get the fire bug up here for Come on, Sylvie, get up here. It's not like you're shy or anything. This one over here has an upright boiler. All right, now we're going to go down the line. Okay, Sylvie, you got a whistle. Nope, that's it. All right, next one. We got a whistle. Any more? Nope. Next. Ooh, that hurt. Any more? Any more? Nope. Next. Any more? Okay. And the quarter scale. Any more? Hey. What a family that they're sitting there, and if you engage the clutch on the other, you push the lever back and forth. This one you have to turn the knob to make it go. Hey guys, you got a whistle. Any more? That's enough. Thank you for bringing it through. And I got your name right, didn't I? Didn't I? Yeah! Okay. Good job. Give a big hand. Next up, we have the biggest steam engine on the ground during this show. It is a Reed. It's rated at 32 and 120 horsepower. It's made up for two different engines. 
merged with the uh, Moline Implement Company, Minneapolis Steel Company, and Machinery Company, and Minneapolis Trash Trashing Machine Company. And so that uh, to form the company, uh, which this happened a lot. Uh, companies went together, merged, merged, bought out, and some failed. In 51, they merged with B.F. Avery and Son. Uh, in 1970, the Oliver Corporation, Minneapolis Moldy Incorporated, Cockshut Farm Equipment, formed White Farm Equipment Company. And so, this, uh, the Moldy Universal, is the first, considered the first tractor that could do everything. There were, what, about 20? 20 implements. This is the breaking plow. You go out first with it. Then you maybe had a disc harrow, various other tools that would prepare the soil. And it's neat to watch them change the stuff. And then they had drills, planters, and the big breakthrough was the cultivators. Back then they didn't use weed sprays and things like that. They had cultivators. And what the farmers a lot of times would do is they'd have a, a tractor, a lot of them were unhandy. And but they could prepare the soil, plow, this, that, and the other, and plant. And a lot of times they planted with horses. And so they would have then a team of horses to cultivate corn and beans in the row crop. Well this, you know, and you can see it's somewhat designed to replace a horse. And so it can it can plow, work the ground, plant, cultivate, and of course it was able to use a uh, help with the harvesting. It has a pulley on the front. The pulley goes right here. And so this was a, a breakthrough. These were made from 1914 to 1915. And so you're. 23? Okay. Which, 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 this is, this is the, which one was made 23? 18 to 23, okay. I guess the book I read is wrong. Anyway. Nineteen nineteen as crack factory electric start and lights, which was unusual. So anyway, and this was a very pivotal time in American agriculture. So it's a very, you know, unique piece of equipment. You don't see very many of them, and you're fortunate to see one. This is Mark Shore. What do you do? You, you live in New Haven, okay. You guys moved around. What? Okay, New Haven, Indiana. All right, this is what another continuation of our features. This is a 1967 Minneapolis Moldy U 302, Matthew Rankin of Belfry, Ohio. Hydro, Wirtz family, 
or plant works farms in Hamlet, Ohio. Next up, in 1970, Minneapolis U-302 works farms in Hamlet, Ohio. This is the LP model. Here we have 1964, Minneapolis 602, Mike and Sandy Roller of Archbold, Ohio. Okay, this 
So it's Saturday morning. Yesterday we had a few more Moline show up. Um, great day yesterday. It's been a great weekend. Uh, but had this 108 garden tractor show up. I got a little wagon behind it with the Moline banner on it. It's nice uh, 602. And uh, this is from the Schrock Farm in Middleburg. Middlebury, Indiana, it's a 64. They are uh, part of the, the Prairie Gold Rush show next year in September, which I'll get to, I'll show the flyer here in a little bit. But he brought a semi in, actually a couple semi loads over yesterday. It was nice of him to do. Uh, he brought these big 705s and 6s. Nice original 705 here. It's a 64 also. The belt pulley on there. And another 64. This is Dennis Miller. Uh, also from over there in Indiana. Kind of noticed yesterday on all of these, the the fenders where they get tore up and are, these are all in really nice shape which is a good thing to see um, 706 here with the uh, front wheel assist this is a 63 it's also Andrew Miller's it's got a new set of front tires on there and then a UTS, it's Mark Farmwalds from Shipshe, Indiana. It's a propane. Looks like it's been painted at some point in time, but nice straight UTS. And also yesterday afternoon about the same time this nice uh, wide front restored R came in and this is a 51 Grayson Stinson Hubert from uh, Monticello Indiana nice looking uh, nice looking R and they brought a nicely restored M670 Super 66 purchase at the Robinson Implement uh, Company and uh, by Leroy and Judy Cosgrave Buffalo Indiana is restored in 2011 this is a very nice uh, 670 it's got a couple banana weights on it it's got the external uh, air cleaner and obviously a propane they did a nice job painting this and going over the whole tractor so and it's got a quick hitch on it similar to my the one on my 302 I need to get a decal on mine like they've got two sets of remotes so nice nice restored so today we're just going to enjoy the day and more people will be around I'm sure and uh it's been, like I said, been a good show. It's nice and peaceful this morning. It's always the fun time at these shows is you get here early and you can look around and not be have big crowds. But uh, yeah, we're we're having fun. So this is the flyer I was talking about, uh, September twenty third, twenty second, twenty third, twenty fourth, twenty twenty three. Uh, it's going to be at the Napanee Power of the Past show in Napanee, Indiana. And there's the contact information. Also, coming up here is the 33rd Annual Farm Days in Morrow County, Ohio, August 5th, 6th, and 7th. They are featuring Minneapolis Moline. And uh, there's the contact info there. You can call Dwight 
but uh, that's a really good show. It's not far from my house, so I will unload the barn and take uh, as much as I can there. And I know Dwight will do the same. There'll be quite a few mullings there, so if you can make that show, uh, I know Dwight would appreciate it. It'll be a nice show.